number two of exposing Freemasonry and its weirdness in Africa. I don't when I got saved, and my father, my father was a Freemason, and he was a grand wizard for the Freemason. And my dad had a snake in the house we live in, and he communicates with the snake. And he was an ambassador. He traveled and went to London. And one of my bishops and I, he's been with me for 40 years. And uh, I said to him, I want us to fast for three days and let's kill this snake. So that's Bishop Duncan confirming that his father was a Mason. Okay? So this is a very popular bishop in Africa. This is Bishop Duncan. Williams is very very popular very well well beloved amongst many I do differ with him on certain teachings and stuff like that but on this particular episode we are talking about this exposure on Freemasonry that's going on and the one that we are talking about on the first part we confirmed that the Knights of Malta which um, you saw uh, Archbishop uh, Tabu part of it's actually known as the Knights of Malta. Currently, it's known as the Knight of St. John, but in its original name, it is the Knight of Malta. We, and then on the previous episode, then we then dug deep further to confirm from this gentleman here that um, the Knights of Malta is also a part of Freemasonry. And if it's a part of Freemasonry, we then showed the established idea around Catholicism and how they are kind of meshing the entire thing. You have to check the full episode. It will be down in the pink comments. So somebody actually asked this question. Can a Christian be a Mason? Can a Christian get involved in any of these fraternities? And so one I saw that particular question. I think Joseph asked that question in the comment section. Thank you very much. Uh, with, this con with this testimony that you just heard Bishop Duncan speaking right now, that his father was part of this entire thing, there is something that then started to happen in his life that he found very difficult. He says at one particular point, uh, he came uh, across a very difficult thing. And I'm going to play that video just now began to sense the presence of evil. He sensed. And it was like I was overpowered by evil presence. And I could hear them. But I didn't see, but I could hear them. And then I Remember, father is a mason. And there's this curse in the house or so forth. And it's now influencing things. So can a Christian be? voice said to me, in those days we didn't have standby generators and any of those things, so when your light went off, you, you lighted a candle, so I had a candle and a match uh, in my room. So the voice said, light the candle. My light dear. the candle. And he said, place your right palm on the flame. And uh, it didn't make sense, but it was as if I could not resist the power of the voice. And so I placed my right palm on the flame and that is the result of this i could see so he gives that testimony you can go look out for it he explains because of this involvement because of his father's involvement in this dark stuff it now brought about these ritualistic spirits and whatnot and all these things and to a point where they now influenced him at his young age before he was saved to actually go to as far as burning his own head okay so that's how he actually lost. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know Duncan Williams' fingers with <laughs> all these years. I never even realized. <laughs> you can confirm down in the comment section if you were just like me. <laughs> I didn't even know until a while ago. And so, can a Christian be a Mason? No. And another reason, let me give you another reason why a Christian cannot be a Mason. Remember this guy from part number one, where we showed that he does confirm that the Knights of Malta, the Knights of St. John, are part of the Freemasons, the entire thing. There's something he says every single time when he finishes a video. At the end of every single video that he makes, he always has this statement here. And the statement says, so must it be. Now, this particular statement, it's a, a statement that's 
That's equivalent to saying, so shall it be. Okay? But they love using the statement in Satanism. Okay? So already you can already see this uh, thing. You can Google it. You can research it. Okay? Not making it up. <laughs> they love using the statement. Some of you might have never even heard the statement. So would it be. So would it be. So shall it be. This is a statement that they say in Satanism and all those kind of things. They love using that particular thing. But mainly Freemasonry and so forth. And so because of these oaths that they get, they take part in, because of all these rituals that you can see what they have done uh, to some of the house members, uh, like uh, Bishop Duncan over there, to a point where their spirits, to a point where it influenced him to that certain level, a Christian can't get involved in anything like that. You can't. You just cannot be involved in that. And also, remember, this entire night uh, and all this ritual stuff that they get involved in, it's not just thing. I mean, like anything that you see the the queen involved in, you can see here the queen is also wearing her Knight of Malta outfit. Does that now <laughs> feather? Does that now feather your, your understanding of how deep this is? I mean, like the queen is also wearing just about the same thing. Why? Because whatever they are doing over there, they know. Only they know. A Christian has no, because the Bible says, what you are told in secret, bring it out and say it on the rooftops. Do you think they would allow you to be going out there and saying what is said in secret out at the rooftop? No, they would not. And so that's why you have people like the queen. But let's not dismiss something here. I saw this thing here on Daystar. This is on the Daystar website. Uh, Daystar wrote this article commending people joining the Knights of Malta. So he started being inspired by the Masons. He says, uh, I saw many parallels in the history of the Knights of Malta who are called the Knights of St. John. He also confirms the, the delusion there <laughs> of changing names and all. the the bravery of the Knights of Malta with what he, he aspires for. So he, 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 he wants such courage. He even sees it in a vision. <laughs> now, who's Rick Joyner? Rick Joyner is a confessed, open Knight of Malta member. There he is. You can see him there being, uh, they are putting a star on him there. You can see him there dressed like the Knights of Malta there. You can see the Queen's picture right under. You can see him there. That's Rick Joyner right on the, on the side there. You can see his fellow colleagueism there. <laughs> He's busy colleaguing with people there. <laughs> hey, people are funny. <laughs> So he's busy there colleaguing and whatnot and all that kind of stuff. So Pastor Rick Joyner for those, he's the one who, uh, last time I ended, he was the one who was in charge of, Mon of Morning Star. And he's, in co he's commanding the entire thing. So how then, how then are these guys Christians and they still do those things? It's the end time. <laughs> it's the end time. Okay, the Bible says until you, uh, the, the, the day will not come when the Messiah will be revealed or when, the Antichrist, when Christ comes back to fetch his church. Until you see the revealing and the, uh, uh, the man of sin is exposed. And there you go. A man of sin is getting exposed because these people who are associating themselves with him are now coming clear. They are now becoming, they are falling away from doctrine and falling into whatever they want to believe. And so people like Rick Joyner are just a confirmation that people, the falling away has already begun. People are already partaking in that entire hoches. People like Rick Joyner who have joined and actually recruit. I remember hearing messages where Rick Joyner himself would be recruiting church members. He would be telling church members, no, he does command people to, to gain, to join, and you can see him there down in the corner. So if the rights of Malta, associated closely with the Queen. You see the, the, the Catholic Church. You see the Anglican Church also going over there. One thing for sure is that there is an agenda that is being pushed. And that agenda is to make us less alert, less likely to think by having members in the church who are part of these things, who join these things. But 
Thank God we have testimonies of people like Bishop Duncan there showing that this thing was in my house. My father was part of this thing and I was a victim of the cases that come with that thing. Showing that a Christian cannot be a part of this thing. On the next episode, therefore, we'll show other people who are prominent, known, but they are part of this, who are not associated, but for some reason they are associated with one church, <laughs> one church that is under apostasy on a major level. So part number three will be done later on, so check the pinned comment if it's not done by now, and I'll see you on a later on. Be on the alert. It's Ricky, y'all be blessed.